In today's video, I'm going to show you two really effective plays from five wide that can kind of be ran in conjunction out of the New York Jets offensive playbook. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I want to encourage you to click the subscribe button. I upload uh, four videos a day, one at 2 o'clock, one at 4 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock, and one at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. I also live stream Madden every single night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern on my YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed, you are missing out. We cover offensive and defensive tips here on our YouTube channel every single day. Now, uh, I'm working out of the New York Jets playbook a little bit on kind of a five-wide scheme, and I really like this empty Y slot formation. I love this formation. I think this has a ton of potential. And the two plays we're going to cover today are the double pivot and the shallow cross. Um, the double pivot and the shallow cross, cross together provide you with a couple of really powerful routes um, against your opponent. So we're going to jump right in here and break down against the coverages. We're going to start with shallow cross. This is probably my favorite uh, passing concept from this formation because it is a mesh concept, and I absolutely love mesh comment concepts. Um, I wrote an entire ebook on the air raid. I love the air raid offense and what it brings to the table. And so we're going to break this down right now. So what's really nice about the five wide receiver formation is it has answers against everything. The biggest thing that you have to understand about five wide, in my opinion, is you have to have a plan for man-to-man -man coverage. If you can beat man-to-man -man coverage from five wide, I believe that you can beat every defense in the game because the spread formation does so good against zone coverage this year. So how do you beat how do you beat man press and, and specifically man press? Because what you'll see here, if you watch Goblin, he's gonna get bumped and it's gonna be challenging for him to get off of his jam and to be able to beat man to man coverage. If they have a better corner than you, it's gonna be really challenging. So here's a little trick that you can use to be able to get Godwin off the jam and to be able to make this very effective. From these formations, uh, different types of motions will do different types of things. You'll see here, here that if I motion McCoy to the right, it's actually going to bring him back into the backfield, and now we have a very wide spread look. If I put him down in the, in the back uh, as, the, as the back here, if I try to motion him to the left, you're going to notice that he's going to come all the way across formation and be on the left side of the screen. So we don't really want either one of those, right? What we want to do is try to figure some way to get him unbumpable. But what you'll notice is this is dime or dollar three two six. Most people will run dime or dollar if you go all out five wide. If they if you don't go all out five wide, they'll probably likely run some type of nickel package um, if you're able to audible down and run. So this is five wide against dollar. And what you'll notice is that the person that's matched up against McCoy is a linebacker, which means he's not going to press him. That is absolutely critical for the way that we want to use these mesh routes. Drag routes are really good in Madden as long as you can keep them from getting pressed. So all I got to worry about now is how do I get Godwin unjammed? Well, if I motion him to the left, you see it's going to put him on the line of scrimmage, and I don't really want to do that. But if I motion him to the right, what you're going to see is it's going to bring him in tight just like this right here. And now what you're going to see is this gives me a decent chance that once he's going to get off the jam, he will be able to get out in the open field. We'll show this to you one more time. So if I motion Godwin to the right, and I think I honestly, um, let me show you here. So we're going to motion right in here to the right side of the field. What you'll notice is if they remand line and repress, that will get him pressed. But if I motion him to the left and just snap while he's moving, now he's completely unbumpable and he's going to be very effective in the open field for this play. So by using motion, you can really change what the defense is going to be doing. In fact, if I motion him to the right, I could snap it right as he's moving as well. And he's going to get that nice little inside step on, this, uh, on the player. And he's going to go and be successful. This is going to force your opponent to not press. And when you can force your opponent not to press against this five wide, that's where it's really going to be effective. You see the drag McCoy is constantly going to be able to win against man-to-man -man coverage. Why? Because he's not getting jammed, right? Because he's not getting jammed. So during this, what's going to happen is your opponent's going to say, okay, well, there's no point in pressing these guys, so I'm just going to shade coverage over top. If they shade coverage over top, as you can see, the drags are still being very successful against man-to-man -man coverage. And we're going to go over why I believe drag routes are um, one of the top routes in the game as long as you can get them unbumpable. If you can get them unbumpable, it's super, super, super important uh, for this offense. So what you'll see now is now that we've got them unbumpable, what I want to do is I want to show you this against zone. And we're going to start against probably the best zone to stop this, and that is the cover two. What you'll notice is these little drag routes are going to really get underneath 
all of the yellow zones and the cloud flats. So what the defense is going to have to do instead is they're going to have to shade coverage down. They're going to have to bring their coverage down into the box, and they're going to have to stop these little drags. But as you can see, even shaded coverage down does not stop these drag routes. The drag routes are still going to get open, and let me show you what's going to happen here on the right. All you got to do is make sure they don't use her the drags, right? And they can only use her one of the drags. That's the cool part about the mesh concept. They can only use her one drag route. So this now leaves you with open space. Um, as you, what you'll notice here, so again, if they're not showing press, there's no need to motion. You don't have to motion if they're not showing press. If they show press, that's when you need to motion. So just understand that and, and be aware of that. What you'll also notice here is if I motion Scotty Miller to the right, you see that he's going to come all the way across the formation and go right into this little position right here. You can do some things with that. You can obviously go three by one on that side, create man switches, and as you can see, Godwin uh, can get outside of that on man coverage as well but one of the things that i want to show you here is this cover cover three or cover two i'm sorry and i want to shade coverage down i just want you to watch how you can easily just read the mesh just read the mesh that's it you're just reading the mesh which drag comes open at which point both drags will be open at some point and more than likely what they're going to do is they're going to use her one of the crossing routes right and what you'll also notice really quickly is what I want to shoot. I'm going to show you an instant replay, and then I'm going to show you kind of what they're going to do and what their solution is going to be for them to be able to stop these drag routes. So what you'll notice here, um, this is an instant replay. Um, if you just watch the drags, you notice that when they cross, the um, that first initial drag is drawing some attention from the vert hook on the left. The right side guy has no attention whatsoever. Most of the time they're going to use the right side drag and you're going to hit Chris Godwin because they're going to see that that route is open. They're probably going to be using this blitzing linebacker and more than likely they're going to take that drag as it goes to the left side. What you'll notice here is now that the drags have cleared, both drags are now coming wide open underneath and they're going to be able just to eat up some yardage. It's not until he gets to the hash mark that the yellow zone on the left side starts to pay attention to the right side drag. Now, obviously, one other thing is, as you can notice here, both the in route and the post route in behind are now coming wide open at this point as well. So what I want to do now is I want to show you what the defense is going to do to be able to come down and stop the drag routes. Obviously, they can't play man-to-man -man coverage on it. We've already established that um, with our ability. As long as we don't get pressed, we are going to be able to beat man-to-man -man -man with those drag routes. So now what they're going to do is what they're going to do is they're going to start dropping these zones and they're going to drop their hooks to five yards. So I'm going to come back out in the dollar and I want to show you now this is shaded coverage down. OK, so we're going to get those hard flats on the outside um, coverage against this. Watch these yellows. You see how they come down. You see that right there. They're going to come down and they're going to try to make a play on your uh, drag routes. They're, they're going to really kind of clamp uh, clamp down on the drag routes. And what you'll notice here is on the right side, you can, if they're not, if they're not playing hard flats, now if they're not playing, this is why I love drag routes, because drag routes threaten every single level of the horizontal piece of the defense. They threaten the hard flats, they threaten the cloud flat, or the, the, uh, the yellow zones as well, all the way across. So you have to play underneath all the way across here, and what that's going to do is it's going to open up the hard flats. If they're not playing hard flat coverage, you're going to be able to hit either drag route. Either one of those drags are going to be able to be hit. Now, in my opinion, obviously, the, the left side drag is going to get a little bit, um, be a little bit easier to hit than the right side. And then the other thing that you can do is you can hit the routes in behind them. Now, what they're likely to do, and this is why I love this play so much, they're likely to throw their, their uh, extra backer into a deep blue, right? And that should take away some of this deep stuff. But this dig route right over the middle, if you if you just hit that, um, that dig route to Gronk right as he comes across, which is actually really, really easy to pass lead, your job is just to get this and clear it away. And what I actually like to do is sometimes I'll smart route it just so that it goes super, super deep here. Um, obviously, you can hit this post. The post route on the left side is open, especially if they hard flat. You have to understand, if they hard flat from a cover two, right? If they hard flat from a cover two, this post route is going to be open really early, and you're going to be able to hit it as you're reading and scanning. Because you're forcing them to have to pull at least two to four resources down underneath to stop these drags, it's going to give you a lot more resources in the back end of the defense to be able to hit some of these routes. One of those routes is the post route, but the other route that I want to show you is this deep dig route. And 
what you're wanting to do, what you want to make sure, because you don't want what just happened, you do not want that to happen. And that's why you have to hit it at a very specific point within this. Um, what you want to do is you want to wait here, back in the pocket, back in the pocket, back in the pocket. I'm past leading it straight up, and you see it's going to get over that yellow zone. Now, let's say that you're concerned and you don't want to throw a pick. You want to be very cautious. You don't want to throw a pick. You, you don't want to even take a chance. When he comes across, just high point it and click X. High point it and click secure catch. X on PlayStation and A on Xbox uh, One. Okay? So that's a little bit about this play. We're going to go do a different coverage here in just a second. Before we do, I want to highlight my text membership. If you have been watching my videos for any length of time and you've gotten value out of them, I want to tell you about my text message membership. My text message membership is 100% designed to help you go to the next level in Madden 21, to help you go from a beginner player to a high level Madden player that can win money games and CFM leagues and all of that stuff. How we do this is every single week, if you are on my text message membership thread, you will receive a video from me. It's typically about 45 minutes to an hour long that talks about the meta of Madden, updates you on that, and also gives you different schemes that you can use in your own game. We have covered full schemes out of the Carolina Bunch, the Split Close Pads, the Ace Slot Offset, the U-Trips, the Gun Cluster, the Single Back Trio, the Big Nickel Over G, as well as many other schemes. These update every single week as well, so you're always getting the latest and most up-to-date scheme that we actually can give you within what's going on in the Madden world. So I would highly encourage you, if you have not already joined it, literally all you have to do to sign up is just pull your cell phone out send me a text message. My number's in the top left-hand corner of your screen, and I'll give it to you right here. It's 812-216-3644. That is my cell phone number. Shoot me a text message and let me know you'd like to receive those videos. I'll add you to my list. And like I said, every Monday, we shoot out a text to everybody and just say, hey, hope your week's been going well. Here's this week's video. Uh, be sure to check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. That's it. Once a week, no more. If you have Madden questions or want to talk further, obviously it's my personal cell phone number, so you can always hit me back and always text, and we can chat that way. But just wanted to let you know about that. So cover three. Um, moving on to cover three. This is cover three shaded down. I just want to I want to show you this. You see that the uh, hard flat coverage will will somewhat um, handle um, handle these drags as they come across. One thing I do want to show you. Um, from a cover three perspective is right there in that window. There is a window to throw the route because you only have two underneath yellow zones. And so because you only have two underneath yellow zones, these drags will have a little bit of potential. You see right there, uh, we can get that. And you see, we can get these underneath still. We can still get them underneath um, as well. One other little thing that I forgot to tell you about on the cover two is when they're coming across, all you got to do is just playmaker them up. And you see that they're going to go up into this corner area. If they're running hard flats on the outside, just simply play maker him up, and it'll t it'll kill it. That's another way that you can really do some damage against these types of coverages. Now, the next thing I want to cover really quickly here with you is this right side guy. You can do whatever you want with him. Honestly, you can put him on a smoke. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, if you did put him on a smoke, I just want to show you why that would be beneficial. If they're in hard flats, you see he'll pull. You see that he'll pull. So if I can fit that route into Godwin, right on a hard, that hard flat's going to hang right on that on that receiver. Another thing that you could do with him is you could put him on a simple curl route. Why would that be significant? Because if they're shading their coverage all the way down, then this little window should be fair, relatively easy to hit. This um, this the the other thing actually too, and my personal favorite thing to do with that far right receiver, if I have um, the ability to, is to put him on a smart routed dig. Just a simple smart routed in. It's going to be coming right behind that other dig, but it works really, really, really well because of the spacing of this play. Now, you could leave him on a comeback as well. There's nothing wrong with a comeback. And uh, what you'll see here is we can throw that. My concern with the comeback is that right there. If you're facing a cornerback that has really good coverage, it's going to be challenging to hit the comeback in behind it. What I would rather you do is say, okay, we're going to kind of hedge our bet here and we're going to go with, you know, an additional dig route or a curl route or even a smart routed out route. Honestly, smart routed out routes are kind of good um, against some of the coverages you're going to be facing with the shade coverage. The one thing, again, that I want to make sure that you understand, we want to have 
answers for different things they're going to do. The primary thing that they're going to need to stop from this play is they're going to need to stop these double drags. That's what we want. We want to focus on the double drags and we want to execute the double drags with excellence. What we need, and, and that's why, because of that reason, I really like the smart routed dig or the curl. Because what's going to happen is you're reading this all the way through, go through your progression, progressions, nothing there. And then you check down, and those drags have now pulled the flat zones out of the position. They've taken the hook curls out of position, and you can now hit that that um, that curl route. The other reason I really like the curl is because against man-to-man -man coverage, it gives you an additional read. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you are facing man-to-man -man coverage, what I want you to do right now, low ball, inside, curl, click on, and aggressive catch it. It's an automatic animation for you against man coverage. You're going to have answers to everything they're going to do. Now, let's say they do something like this, and you you know, you kind of can freestyle with him. Again, he's kind of one of those guys, you can do all kinds of things with him. If they're showing you a cover two look and you think they're playing up in the box, they're going to come after you, don't be afraid to hit this. Here's the bottom line with five wide, and this is what I want you to really walk away with from this video. Five wide is all about stretching the defense both horizontally and vertically. What we're trying to do with this play is run a simple horizontal stretch on the defense. One other adjust, you could do multiple things with this. For example, I could motion Gronk to the, to the left side of the field right here, and I could simply put these two flat routes on the field. What you'll notice is these are going to pull these uh, guys out of the way, and you can then pass the drag routes even against the five yarded yellow zones. Another really easy way to be successful with this because that dig route's okay, you know, I mean, it's good. But it's not necessary, and you could do it on both sides. You got a smoke screen now. You got a flat route on the other side. You still got a post route over the middle of the field. And what I like about this is now, if they're running hard flats, then it's an easy pass lead. You're literally just pass leading it right in between the yellow and the hard flat. And even this is shaded coverage underneath, and they're not going to be able to stop it. That's what makes it so powerful because they can't do it. They have to use her both. They can't use her both because there's two of them going in opposite directions let me show you cover two now and i just want to show you this concept and again i love the mesh concept i could talk about this so much um this is probably my favorite concept in madden history uh next maybe maybe next to levels levels is really good too but watch this right here you see on the le on the right side because he has three yellows they're going to be able to hang they're, they're going to be able to hang out in that spot well watch this so again i'm running that same concept i just want to stick with this really quickly and show you how deep this can go these are very, very underneath coverages to be able to stop this. It's obviously going to open everything else up for you. What you'll notice here on the left side is same kind of thing. You see, they kind of run into each other. That's the one reason I don't know that it's necessarily the best idea. If there were, if we could get these guys to be real routes, um, that would be amazing. That would make this play like borderline unstoppable. But unfortunately, we can't. If they go to something like that out of the cover two, um, it certainly will do a good job. Um, just as far as taking things away, even if you use just simple out routes, um, just little things here to try to pull these zones away here, you can hit it. It's not that you can't hit the route. It's just that you can't, you're going to hit it for three, for four, for five, which is okay. Um, it's just about understanding that. So another example of something you can do, you take Gronk, put him on a flat, put Miller now in motion, put him on a flat. And now, you know, you're kind of running the same concept. But these are all underneath zones. Let me just put um, the backside guy on. So you got four yellow zones all underneath here. Now, if I just playmaker one of these guys up, as you can see, it absolutely torches that kind of coverage, that kind of approach. So they can't really do that. But that's just kind of how you – and again, let's say they do it and you don't um, – you don't use flats. Let's say you just have your two drags. If they're shading coverage down and they're running those yellows down, those yellow zones underneath like they're going to have to do to stop this, when it comes over, just playmaker up. And as you can see here, um, inside pass lead, those Sean McCoy, that hard flat can't do anything. That hard flat cannot do anything to stop it. Um, let me show you cover two really quickly stock and then we'll get out of here. I just want to show you some of the adjustments that people are going to do to be able to hang with you on this play. So same exact just this is basically cover two. So if you watch it when I motion this guy over, you see that the the, the cloud flat's not going to get out there. He has to respect the fact that that post can go vertical. And so because he has to respect the post going vertical, he has to go back. He can't just come down on that drag. That's his principle. That's his principle. So he can't go with him. And the reason that that's significant, let me show you soft squats really quickly here um, as well. But I just want to show you why this is so significant. This is a soft squat. And as you can see, the same result. 
that forces you cannot stop a drag route without hard flats. You can't stop it. That's why I like mesh so much because because they can't stop this. That means they ha that means it causes an if then equation. It means it causes an if then equation. And so because they can't stop it with a cloud flat or a purple or any of that stuff, now what they've got to do is they've got to be playing hard flats, which playmakering up kills the hard flat right in that window in between the hard flat and the outside guy. And you, the good part, you can do this against cover four, cover three, cover six, cover 18. It does not matter what they do. This will torch it. Again, you see this right here. You're just playmakering it up. That time it gave me the wrong guy, unfortunately. I think I might have hit Playmaker a little bit too late. And you want to practice this and get used to this. Again, for those of you that might not know, to Playmaker, you might be sitting there asking, how do I Playmaker? All you do is flick the right stick up. And it's going to put the quarter, the player nearest the quarterback. That's why right at this point, right when he gets to in between that left slot corner and that left inside backer, that's when you're wanting to make this decision. So if you see hard flats right there, Playmaker up, one of them is going upfield, and one of them is going to get open. Okay? So I know I spent a ton of time on a mesh concept. You might be sitting there saying, why would you spend so much time on this? Because I really believe it's that effective. Uh, but as you can see here, just inside pass lead it, inside and up. So I'm throwing it about 1 o'clock, and you're going to get that. As long as you don't move with your quarterback, right? As long as you keep him, like, right in here, you'll see. It's going to playmaker in the back every single time, and that window is wide open. So now you can build off of this because you only need two routes. You only need two people on crossers. You can do pretty much anything else you want. Now, a good variance to this play, what people will start doing is they'll start cross manning. So a good variance to play is double pivot. You see it's effectively the same play. There's not really anything different, right? But now they're on pivot routes. And when a pivot doesn't get pressed, um, it kills man. So let me show you man coverage just real quick. It's the same basic concept. It's just they're on pivot routes. And why I like pivot routes, why I like zig routes is primarily because I think that it's going to be very difficult for a defense to be able to cross man and hang with these pivot routes. If they, if they cross man, you're going to kill them. As you can see here, as long as they don't get pressed, those routes will typically beat man-to-man -man coverage, especially if you have um, really, really good route running. Now, what you'll see here is if he presses, you see here, I see the press. So when I motion Goblin out, and it's that same thing. If I can get him unbumpable, he's going to kill it. And as you can see, we're out and we're going. The same thing is true on the right side. Let me show you what I'm talking about really quickly. Double pivot. Zigs in and out. Torches it. Stock whip routes. You don't really want to hot route them, in my opinion. I think when they are on the play stock, meaning they come with the play, you don't have to create them by putting them on a zig. It makes it much, 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 much more effective. You'll see here, this is shaded coverage. Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm running the drags. Um, this is shaded coverage over top. And what I want to show you is um, the, the pivot play. So I'm in man coverage, but I've shaded now over top. Watch McCoy, comes in, comes out, and he torches manic man. And we're able to get out for a good five to six yards. Why would this be important? This is important because what they're going to start doing, what defenses will start doing, I guarantee you, is they're, they're going to take these safeties, and they're going to cross man on these guys. So they may do something like this with, um, you know, maybe they run, uh, maybe they run uh, some variance of something like this right here. Right. I could, this is a realistic coverage. I can see them do. So they got the cross man to try to take away the drag, even though it's really not going to take it away. But then you, they start doing that. So you go to something like this. Now, look, they're not, they're not even close. It's just a quick read. You fake the drag. And now you come back outside with the pivot route very similar to your drag concept in terms of how it's going to threaten the hard flats. They're going to be bringing everybody up top. Everybody's coming down, right? Everybody's coming down for the party. Everybody wants to come down and they want to stop the drag routes. Now they're called double pivot. Looks exactly the same. They go in two different directions and now you can hit that post route. Very, very effective scheme. In my opinion, I think this five wide is a lot of fun. And then what happens well, you've threatened them, you've threatened them, you've threatened them, you've threatened them, and then all of a sudden you get a good, you get a call, or you start to see they're coming up and down. They're coming up, they're coming up, they're coming up, they're coming up. Now you go to four verticals and you throw streaks. You go, you go get six with the six call. That is how you run five wide. That is why I love five wide. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think these are a couple of the most effective plays in the daggone world 
because of how simple this is. You've got you've got shell cross, double pivot, four verticals, and then if that's not enough, if they start trying to send pressure, I'm telling you right now, you don't blitz five wide, uh, especially out of zone coverage. If they try to blitz you out of five wide, you go to wide receiver double screen and you let it. You will kill any blitz that you're facing. That route on the right side will work. And then what you'll also notice here is on the left side, the left side's not too shabby either. You get a little S, uh, little SE screen right there, but let the blocks get set up on that right side and you're gonna be killing it. Very effective little five wide scheme for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this video is helpful. I hope you use this. Let me know how it goes. And remember, if you want to be a better Madden player, if you want to get that material that I produce every single week, I would highly encourage you and ask you to go ahead and shoot me a text message. My number is in the description. It's also in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Let me know um, that you guys want to receive those videos, and I will shoot you a link that has a playlist with all of them. Right now, I think we have at least nine videos in that playlist. We add to it every single week. And so far, it's just been a ton of fun to get super deep with this game. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video breakdown. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always text me if you have Madden questions or things you want to see broken down.